Welcome to Module 4 of the Partner Practice Enablement Bootcamp for Windows Azure. In this module, we will look at Windows Active Directory and Windows Azure integration. This module will focus primarily on integrating existing on-premise Active Directory with Windows Azure Active Directory. We'll also explore the differences between the supported scenarios and the single sign-on experience that users will encounter in each scenario. We will also look at use cases for running Windows Server Active Directory on a virtual machine in Windows Azure and provide some best practices for this scenario. Our instructor today will be Rick Rainey. Rick is the co-founder of Opsgility, an organization focused on Windows Azure training. Rick is also a Microsoft veteran. He has a wide range of experience across Windows Azure that we are pleased to bring to you through this training. Without any further delay, please welcome our trainer. Rick? Thank you very much for that introduction. In this module, we're going to be covering Windows Azure Active Directory integration. Today, we're going to look primarily at directory integration capabilities of Windows Azure AD. In particular, I'm going to cover scenarios whereby integration with an on-premise AD are supported. And while this will make up the majority of the content for this module, I'm also going to spend some time talking about scenarios for running Windows Server AD in Windows Azure Virtual Machines, as well as some deployment considerations for doing so. So let's start by talking about how you can integrate an on-premise Active Directory with your Windows Azure Active Directory tenant in Azure. This is a powerful feature of Windows Azure AD that greatly simplifies identity and access management of cloud-based applications for your on-premise users. There are four primary integration scenarios, and I'm going to talk about the first three in this module. The first scenario is called directory sync. And with directory sync, users and groups and contacts are synchronized from the on-premise directory to Windows Azure AD. A key point to note in this case is that when user objects are synchronized to Windows Azure AD, their on-premise password is not part of the data that's synchronized. So what this means is that users will have a different password when authenticating to Windows Azure AD than when they authenticate to the on-premise directory. If you have Server 2012 R2 deployed, then this scenario will also synchronize devices. The next scenario is called Directory Sync with Password Sync. And this is simply an extension of Directory Sync that also synchronizes a hash of the user's password to Windows Azure AD. So this enables users to sign in to cloud applications using their same on-premise password. It's important to note that this is not single sign-on even though a user may already be authenticated on-premise through, say, the on-premise AD in Kerberos, the user will still be challenged for his or her credentials when accessing cloud applications through Azure AD. The credentials will be the same, but they will have to re-enter them. Some people call this similar sign-on because at least the same password is used even though the user is challenged to enter it. Now, for the password sync extension, you should know that the user's passwords are hashed and it's the hash of the user's password that is stored in Windows Azure AD and not the password itself. Scenario three is called directory sync with single sign-on. This is also known as federated identity because of a federation trust that actually exists between the on-premise AD and your Windows Azure AD tenant. With this solution, users will not be challenged for their username and password if they have already been authenticated on-premise. So in this scenario, the authentication is actually occurring in the on-premise directory. And this is different from the previous two where the authentication is actually occurring in Windows Azure AD. Now to support the trust relationship that you see between the on-premise directory and the Windows Azure Active Directory, a security token service or STS must be deployed next to the on-premise directory to handle the WS Federation protocol. In a Microsoft environment, this STS will likely be Active Directory Federation Services, also known as ADFS, but it could also be a supported third-party STS, such as Shibboleth. This table illustrates the differences between the last two scenarios, which are, again, Directory Sync with Password Sync and Single Sign-On. And to reiterate, with Single Sign-On, your users will not have to re-enter their passwords when accessing cloud applications through Windows Azure AD. And that's just a benefit of the fact that the authentication is actually occurring 
in the on-premise directory. The client access filtering support in single sign-on is a feature that allows you to make decisions at the ADFS server to allow or deny an authentication request based on the location of the client. So those are some of the important distinctions between the, the two scenarios, the last two scenarios that we talked about. So now that you understand the supported scenarios for integrating your on-premise directory with Windows Azure AD, let's take a look at what's needed to actually achieve directory synchronization. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is set up a server in your domain to be the DirSync server. It's technically not necessary, but it is recommended so you're not installing the directory sync tool on your AD server. This tool also requires .NET Framework 3.5. So for example, if you're using server 2012 as your image, uh, you will need to add this feature in the Windows features. Now directory sync can be enabled from the Windows Azure management portal. And to do that, simply from the portal, select your active directory, go to the directory integration tab at the top, and you'll see in the in the page, there's a directory sync setting, and you can set that to activated. Once you set that to activated, there's a link down in step three to download the directory sync tool, and you'll wanna save that to your directory sync server that is joined to the domain. You can also set this up from your Office 365 portal. And to do that, you just simply log into the portal, go to the users and groups section, and at the top, look for the Active Directory Synchronization links. There'll be an option there to activate or deactivate. Uh, in this screenshot, I actually have it already activated. Uh, so there's a Manage link there as well. But when you do that, uh, it'll transition to a screen here, very similar to what you see in the Windows Azure Management Portal. And that is a option to then download the Directory Sync tool, uh, which is in step four. So once you've got the tool downloaded, the installation is really just a matter of clicking through a few wizards to set things up. Once the directory tool is installed, which by the way, it does take a few minutes for this to install. It took mine about 10 minutes. Uh, but anyway, once it is installed, the configuration wizard will start. And the first screen of the wizard is just telling you that you're gonna need your administrator credentials for both your on-premise AD as well as your Azure AD tenant that you're gonna sync your directory objects to. Next, you're gonna enter the administrator credentials for your Azure AD tenant. And if you recall from the last module, this is going to be a user in the directory that is a global administrator of the directory. Next, you're gonna enter the credentials for your on-premise AD administrator. And this screen here is just asking if you want to enable the hybrid deployment feature. And what this will do is make it so that changes in the Azure AD can be synchronized back to the on-premise AD. If you only want synchronization of objects to go one way to your Azure AD, for example, then just leave this unchecked. The password sync option is the extension to directory sync that I mentioned previously. This is the option that will result in a hash of user passwords being synced. Next, the tool will set up configuration based on your responses. And this just takes a few seconds. And then once the configuration is complete, you can tell the tool to do an initial directory sync. And that's it. You've now got directory sync with password sync enabled. Let me give you a few details about the tool. The directory sync configuration is one that is already automated to do most of what you'll need. It runs as a Windows service under the service name Windows Azure Active Directory Sync Service. And one nice feature to call out too is if your DirSync server for some reason were to go offline, an email notification is actually sent indicating that DirSync is not connecting to the directory for synchronization. So what this means is you can pretty much just let this thing go and forget about it unless you get an email indicating that there's a problem. Now, directory sync runs on three hour intervals automatically. And there's nothing you need to do to enable this. It's just on after you install the tool. The password sync extension runs on two minute intervals automatically. And this interval occurs if you checked the checkbox in the configuration wizard for password sync. 
And remember, password sync is just an extension to directory sync. So if you enable it, you're going to see password sync happening every two minutes, plus you're going to see directory sync every three hours. And finally, you can also run directory sync on demand. And so this is useful in those situations where a new user has been added to or maybe a user is removed from the on-premise directory. If it is a situation that requires the change to be immediate, then you can invoke the directory sync using PowerShell. As far as monitoring directory sync, the Windows application event log is where you will find activity logs for the directory synchronization tool. However, if you are one of those that prefers a visual experience for directory synchronization, you can also run the synchronization service manager. Heads up, if you do choose this option, you may get an error saying that the user is not a member of the required security group for the application. And if so, then what you need to do is just create a security group named MIIS admins and add the logged in user to it. There's actually a KB article that explains you know, why this happens and, and the workaround in more details. So be sure to check this out if you run into this. Okay, I'm going to show you a demo in just a second on uh, directory synchronization, but before I do, I thought it might be useful to illustrate the configuration that I've set up for the demo. So I have two virtual machines running in Windows Azure to simulate what would be an on-premise environment. I've configured a virtual network and added two virtual machines to it, one for the domain controller, which is called PPEDC, and another VM for running the directory sync tool, which is called PPE DirSync. The Azure AD tenant is the same tenant that I was showing in the previous module, which is ppe2014.onmicrosoft.com. And the PPE DirSync server is just simply going to reach into the directory on the PPE DC server as scheduled and synchronize user objects and groups to my Azure AD tenant. So let's take a first-hand look now at directory sync with password sync. In this demonstration, I'm going to show directory sync with password sync. And what I, how I'll start this off, I'll, I'll run you through the, some of the configuration and logging that's on the DirSync server. And then I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios. We'll look at a scenario where we change the user password for a user in the on-premise AD server and see how that uh, change is synchronized to Windows Azure AD. And then we'll also look at a scenario where we delete a user from the on-premise AD and then use PowerShell to do a forced directory sync of the objects so that that deleted user is reflected in, in the Windows Azure AD tenant immediately. So to get started, let's go over to the DirSync server. I have a RDP session open to my DirSync server and DirSync's been running on this for a little while, so I've already got some logging in place. I thought I'd start by showing you some of the logging uh, that you can see from the event log for the DirSync tool. So I'm going to go into the event viewer and go to the application event log. And the directory synchronization logs are going to be from the source directory synchronization. So you're looking for uh, these logs. You can see there's quite a few in here already. Remember that there's a couple of intervals, uh, running intervals going on here. There's the three hour directory synchronization interval, uh, which synchronizes adding and removing objects from the local directory uh, to Windows Azure AD, uh, as well as password synchronization, which is occurring every couple of minutes. So you'll see you know, both of those in here. Let me scroll down a little bit and see if I can find, um, I did some password changes here earlier. So let me find one of those. Those are gonna be, I think this one right here is one. This is a password change. So you can see that in the, in the message there. And it's for user Jane Doe. So this is a user in the directory. I, I went and changed her password. And 